everyone. Today I've decided to do a video called, uh, I'm calling it My Reading Quirks. I don't really see this floating around very much. There was a couple videos when I looked for them, but I'm basically just going to talk about six weird little things that I do when I read. Although some of them are not really that little, but you'll see. The first quirk is definitely the one that influences my reading the most, and that is how I organize the books that I am currently reading, in the sense of how do I pick what book to read next. So I have my currently reading pile here uh, to sort of illustrate to you what I mean by that. The first point being that I never read just one book at a time unless I am on vacation and only have a couple books with me, but for my currently reading pile we have these four books. So the top book is the library book that I am currently reading. It's deep down dark. It's about the Chilean uh, mining accident that happened in 2010, I believe it was. And uh, so this is the library book that I can read. Then I have the book from my shelf, like the regular book I just feel like reading from my TBR, and that is uh, The Almost Nearly Perfect People. So there's that one. Then the third book, um, I'm currently rereading the Harry Potter series, so that gets its own category because it's like another side goal that I have. So I'm currently on Goblet of Fire. And then the other category of book is the book that I am borrowing from someone to read, and this is The Fall of Berlin 1945, which is just about the end of World War II. Now, if I had a graphic novel or like a coffee table book, that would be another one that I could kind of include in my in my currently reading. So. I can only, you know, pick up another library book once I have finished the library book I'm currently reading. can only pick a new book off my shelf once I've finished the book that I'm currently reading from my TBR shelf. And it's very, like, in my mind, that is how it works. It's just, like, this very strict way of organizing things. Occasionally there'll be a book that I just have to read right now, but then the other one gets set aside. That sort of thing. So that's definitely my biggest quirk and it really does affect in what way I read things, uh, but at the same time I really like that it works well for me. The second quirk is appreciating a book, so to say. So if I'm reading Gobbled of Fire and I am like got to a really intense moment or I finished a chapter and I'm gonna like set the book down, I'll put my hand on the cover and sort of kind of like feel the embossed letters and turn the book over in my hand, maybe like flip to the first little page again, and read the dedication, something like that. Just sort of sit there and appreciate it. Sometimes I'll smell the book because that's a thing that happens. And just appreciate and taking the time to realize how nice the book feels in your hand. That's, uh, that's another thing that I do a lot. Third one is that I am a very fast reader. Uh, just naturally, I'm, I'm a fast reader, and sometimes when the book is really intense or I know that I'm getting close to finishing it, I'll start reading too fast to the point where I don't really, I'm not really taking in everything that's happening, I'm missing the little details, and I have to tell myself to slow down and think about what I'm reading. Sometimes you put the book down, just for a moment, and then you come back to it. It really comes down to just me reading too quickly and some people don't have that problem, but I definitely do. The fourth quirk is um, how I react to stories. I can get pretty expressive when I'm reading. One of the really good examples is reading Storm of Swords, which is the third book in the Song of Ice and Fire series, and there's a couple really big moments in that book, and I was reading it in public when a specific wedding happens, and I was definitely mouth open, drop the book, you know, just <gasps> another good example is in first year when I was uh, living with a roommate, like we shared a room together, I was reading one day and you got to that moment at the end and I literally sat up in bed and went, oh my God. And she had no idea at that time what I was reacting to. She eventually did read the book and understood where I was coming from. But there are just moments where you can't sit still. I can't sit still and just passively take everything. I need to react. I gotta roll my eyes. I gotta, ugh, I gotta do something. And that's how I like to read. I want to be able to react to something. I like it when a book means enough to me that I can be expressive and want to react to it. Although it's not always totally appropriate in public, but it happens. Number five is sort of how I read 
in the sense of where I put myself when I'm reading. When I read outside, which I really like doing when it's sunny, I'll, you know, take a take a seat and outside and just chill in the sun and read, I can focus completely on reading. When I'm in a public place, I can just sit there and read, no problem. But the thing is, if I'm in my room, I have such a hard time focusing on reading. I need to be doing something else at the same time, whether it's I don't know, jiggling my knee or like fidgeting with something in my hand. I just need to be doing something else. I think because there's so many other distractions in my room, there's the TV, there's my computer, there's my phone, things like that. And so when I'm reading, I want to be able to move my knee like I'm doing right now while I'm reading. And it just helps me focus. I don't know why. I'm sure there's some sort of scientific explanation, like when you chew gum, it helps you study and then you chew during the test. I've heard that before. But I think that kind of works for me with reading when I know there are so many other things I could be doing. Because when I'm outside, I'm separated from my TV and my laptop and everything like that. But when I'm in my room, they're all there surrounding me. And for some reason, if I fidget with something or am eating or drinking something, it just re it really helps. The final quirk that I want to talk about today, uh, number six, is... I need to read the whole book. An example is Fangirl. There's the fan fiction intermixed with the rest of the story and some people were skipping over the fan fiction because it didn't interest them and they felt it was unnecessary. I didn't really like the fan fiction either, but I had to read it. That's the only way in my mind that I can consider the book read is when I have read everything. Now, when you have like a prologue or an epilogue, gotta read that too. Appendices are a little different. Appendices don't really count in my brain. So like with Lord of the Rings, when I read that, I didn't need to read all of the appendices in my mind to have read the book. I do the same thing with certain magazines like National Geographic. I can't say I have read the magazine until I read every single article. I used to read Entertainment Weekly a lot. I needed to read every little thing in Entertainment Weekly to consider it read. And the same thing applies to books. I just need to read everything or else it really, really bothers me. So those are my range of quirks. Some of them really affect how I read. Others are just sort of there. I'm sure everyone has their own uh, set of reading quirks, so feel free to let me know what yours are in the comments below. We'll be able to see where some of us bond when it comes to our certain reading quirks. As always, all of the links are in the doobly-doo. Check those out if you feel so inclined. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you later.